Washington Grown is brought to you by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. Also brought to you by Treetop and the Washington Hospitality Association. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gordon, and welcome to Washington Grown. America's favorite dessert is of course the classic apple pie and it's no secret Washington is the number one apple state. So in this episode, we're seeing how it's all put together from the crust to the apples inside to the ice cream on top. It all starts with the crust. We'll join a tour to see how Washington wheat farmers are providing the best ingredients for bakeries throughout the state. And you can't have apple pie without a little ice cream on top. We'll head to Snoqualmie Ice Cream to see how their delicious dessert is made. Mm. Brain freeze. Then we're off to pie to make some mini apple pies of our own. Mm. That is so good. All this and much more today on Washington Grown. Hey, look at that! <laughs> it really is a family affair. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, oh look at gosh. that. Yeah. One of Seattle's most famed neighborhoods is Fremont. It's known as the artsy, quirky neighborhood, but the food is also a key claim to fame. Today we're at Pi, where their take on the classic dessert is a crowd pleaser. It's amazing. It's really good. <laughs> you know what I really like? You can walk and eat it. I mean, the crust is just really nice and firm. And I mean, these are like portable pies. The um, crust has a really good flavor. All of Pie's pies are grab and go, served only mini size. Owner Jess Witsit says pie is an all ages affair. When people come to Pie, uh, what, what can they expect? You can expect a grandma down to a three-year-old sitting at the, the front window there enjoying pie. Um, and what's fun about the individual serving is everyone that comes in can get exactly what they want. We had chocolate pie, please. Can you cheese? We had a family of six, and they all had different pies. Yeah. And they were so happy. It's not just sweet pies, right? Correct, we also do savory pies as well. What's an example of that? Well, most Americans know our chicken pot pie. That's a classic yeah. savory yeah. pie, but we also do steak pies or our English meat pie. And right now our pesto mac and cheese is really popular. Our barbecue pulled pork, wow. Coming up, we're baking up some of our own salted caramel apple mini pies with Jess. Does that look oh, yeah. like it's That looks up great. Enough? Okay. I could just start I just eating this. Don't, I have a big spoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now we're off to Mattawa, a small farming town located near the Columbia River. With its ideal climate and close vicinity to the river, this city is home to numerous orchards and vineyards. Today I'm at an apple orchard and meeting up with Robin Graham, the Stamilt farm manager in Mattawa. For over a century, Stamilt has been growing fresh and delicious apples, and throughout the years, they have developed several varieties of apples. So my first question for Robin was if they have any new varieties coming to the market. So we still do all the, the old standards, uh -huh. uh, reds, red delicious, goldens, uh, which has been a specialist mill for a long time, yeah. but we're also doing some, some new and exciting varieties. So we have uh, sweet tango, we have pinata, we have of course honeycrisp, and then we have some new varieties coming along. One in particular is called rave. I'm personally very excited about it. It's a very early harvesting apple. So. Uh, we typically think of apples as harvesting in the fall. Mm -hmm. This will come off the tree middle of summer. Whoa, so yeah. it eats beautiful, it looks beautiful, it's going to be really fun. Tell me about the process of that. Like, how do you come up with these new varieties and then process of actually getting them out to consumers? 
the breeding process for a new apple takes a very long time. 30 years, I think, is a good number. Wow. Once we decide that we want the apple, mm -hmm. we have to get it out into the field and learn how to grow it. Okay. And that's a multi-year process as well, so a minimum of three to four years, but even after that, we're, we're spending a lot of time continuing to learn how to not only grow it, but store it and pack it. So it's still five, six years of learning and effort. Wow. Robin also says that managing the size of the apple is a key feature for consumers. Consumers don't want a giant apple. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no fun if you have to <laughs> carry it with two hands. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we try to moderate the size a little bit, get mm -hmm. a good medium-sized apple. And that's what people want so they can buy a bag instead of one apple thrown over their shoulder. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And especially little kids. I mean, yeah. little kids have a hard time taking that first bite yeah. of a huge apple. What's your favorite apple? My favorite apple yeah. is Sweet Tango. Texture is a big one for me, and then it's got a great flavor profile. And along those lines, what's a good apple for apple pie? So the classic is Granny Smith. Right. Uh, but a pinata apple, we don't necessarily like to advertise it as something you cook with because it's a great fresh eating, eating apple. Eating apple, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's a really interesting, great apple pie apple. Oh, so give it a try. Definitely. And then buy try. extra so you can eat them on the side. That doesn't hurt. <laughs> okay. While Robin was giving me a tour of the beautiful orchard, I asked him to show me the proper way to pick an apple. You gotta take your thumb. Thumb. And then put it on, you find where the stem meets the branch. Okay. And then if you put a little pressure with uh -huh. your thumb, and then turn the whole apple, twist it up, Upside and it'll there pull you it go. right and off. And then it's perfect. Yeah. And on Honeycrisp, we actually clip the stem. Okay. with a little clipper before oh, yeah? we, we put it in a bin. Okay, now is there one that I can try? Yeah, any of them. Any Go of ahead. It okay. won't hurt anything. All right, so we'll do this one here? Yeah. All right, so, oh, well, that was quick. <laughs> Supposedly, during World War II, when journalists would ask American soldiers why they were going to war, the stock answer was for mom and apple pie. American apple pie goes back to the 16th century when the British, Dutch, and Swedes brought European apple varieties across the Atlantic. An 18th century Swedish historian noted that apple pie was the evening meal of children. The adage an apple a day keeps the doctor away is best supported by leaving the skin on the apple. That's because two-thirds of an apple's fiber is found in the colorful red, green, and yellow skin, along with many beneficial antioxidants. Apples are a good source of vitamin C and may protect our brains against memory loss by supplying us with the antioxidant quercetin. Apples also appear to be protective against cancer, heart disease, and stroke. Besides being healthful and delicious, apples are a versatile whole food snack that you can tuck into a desk drawer, purse, backpack, or glove box and they store well in your refrigerator's crisper box, making them easy to always have on hand. As a quintessential Washington-grown fruit, apples get an A for use in salads, appetizers, and entrees. For a flavorful, boosted, wholesome snack, try dabbing on a little peanut butter, cheese, or yogurt. Fortunately, you don't have to be a soldier going off to war to eat apple pie, and you might even enjoy a slice with mom. Coming up, we're back at Pie in Seattle to make some mini salted caramel apple pies. It's not every day that wheat farmers get to meet the people who buy their crops, but if you farm for Shepherd's Grain, it's just part of doing business. So we're here out on Jim Nolmeyer's farm. We've got a busload of folks coming in from Seattle that are some of our current customers, some prospective customers, and other people that have interest in learning more about Shepherd's Grain. Mike Moran is the general manager for Shepherd's Grain, which is a line of wholesale flowers made in Washington and grown in Washington and other areas. One of the most important things Besides the quality is the consistency. It has to perform very consistently over time. Mike believes that bringing the customers to the farm is vital for success. They get to meet the farmers, learn more about sustainable agriculture, learn more about shepherd's grain, and really get a chance to ask questions and understand better about where their food comes from and how it's grown. 
and how it's grown is part of what makes Shepherd's Grain flour different from other brands. All of our growers are required to be Food Alliance certified, which is a third-party certifier for sustainable practices. All of our growers here in the Northwest are also no practice no-till agriculture, so they don't till the soil. We keep that wheat segregated from the rest of the commodity market, ADM mills it for us, and then blends it and puts it into our bags, branded under the Shepherd's Grain name. So when you, as a bakery or restaurateur or person that's buying flour, we can tell you which farms grew the wheat in every bag of flour. What we really like about partnering with Shepherd's Grain is they do such a good job with bringing the value chain together. They bring the farm families together literally with the end user. If you're a customer out there and you want something that you can, you know, you can trace back to the farm, um, a certified, sustainable uh, product, you can do that with, with Shepherd's Grain. What's it like to meet your customers face to face? It's really a sense of pride to have those people take enough interest in what we're doing for them to come and see how we do it because we're, we're proud of what we're doing here. What is no-till and what are some of the benefits of that? Our no-till system is where we place both our seeds and our nutrients into the undisturbed ground of the previous crop. Our last crop's residue is still there and we don't do any previous seed bread preparation or, or tillage to that. To me, sustainability means protecting our natural resource and as a dry land wheat farmer, that means primarily our soils. From the soil to the bakery shelves, the Shepherd's Grain message is resonating with their customers. The growers, the farmers, the millers, everybody is saying, the crop rotation is better, the quality of, of, of the wheat is better. You know, whatever I can do to spread the word about the importance of this, not only the importance, but the economic sense that it makes. More nutrition, more economic sense, and more community and more collaboration. I just think it's a great opportunity to, to see the land and to see what they're doing, to see the innovation. We source all of our flour. I just switched our company entirely over to Shepherd's Grain Flour earlier this year. Um, for a lot of different reasons, flavor, um, the connection to community, um, quality, consistency, uh, it, just, it just resonates with what we're trying to do, which is from scratch, seasonal cooking. I'm really happy to have these kind of days to share with our customers. We're back in Seattle in Fremont at Pie. It's a neighborhood gathering place serving up delicious, sweet, and savory individual-sized pies. They're just easy to add to your lunch or take back to the office or whatever. I like savory stuff and she likes sweet stuff, so it works out in that sense. Yeah. <laughs> Owner Jess Witsit says their pie shop has an all-ages appeal. You can expect a grandma down to a three-year-old sitting at the, the front window there enjoying pie. And What's fun about the individual serving is everyone that comes in can get exactly what they want. Now we're heading to the kitchen to whip up one of pie's best sellers. The classic apple pie has, you can do a lot of things with it, right? You can add some twists to it. We do about four to five variations. So what are we gonna do today? We're gonna do salted caramel apple. Awesome. First things first, we have to peel our apples. I just kinda go at it, but is there a special Well, it was way always a you... challenge for me to try to get it all in one full swoop. And I go the spiral method, yeah. uh-huh. Okay. And you just go round and round and round until you get the whole thing taken off. Whoopsie, I already ruined oh, the ribbon look there. look at that. I lost. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. Boom. Awesome. Look at how perfect yours looks. Well, I do do this for I know, a I know. <laughs> so do you sell more sweet or savory pies? I'd say we could split it right down the middle. Really? 50-50. Yep. But everybody comes in and asks for apple pie. If we don't have some type of apple pie on the menu, we get in trouble. Now it's time to slice and dice our apples. So Granny Smith seemed to be the most popular apple to use, like with the, the classic apple pie. Why is that? Texture and taste. They're a less sweet apple, mm -hmm. and they tend to hold a firmer texture. Once our apples are diced, we dump in some cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice, and sugar. So is there anything that uh, makes your pies stand out? First of all, we do all individual serving pies, so that's yeah. unique in that and of itself. That is unique, yeah. Um, I would say our pies tend to be less sweet, um, uh -huh. and most people enjoy that. And I've been making pie for a really, really, really long time. Like from the time I was a little kid. And I mean by myself. Yeah. Like I just started you reading just... and was really, I was a geeky little kid who my thing that I geeked out on was baking. We throw our filling on the stove for a bit and add a little butter, then some cornstarch to thicken the mixture. 
Now so. we just need to pour them into a pan to cool them off a bit. Nice and steamy hot. Yes, look at that. And we mix in some caramel. So just sugar, sugar, cream, butter. butter. Pretty Easy simple. Enough. Yum. It's best to make sure you really cool this down before you fill your, your crust. And so why do you want this to be cooler? Mostly they just won't be as pretty. They won't be as pretty. <laughs> but also they'll they'll shrink down and um, they they can boil over more easily. There's just a lot of reasons Yeah. Why. So what is the key to a perfect crust? Handling is a big factor. Well, we like a heartier crust because they're they're pies that we think you should be able to eat with your hands. Mm -hmm. So you just don't you don't want to overhandle the crust. Does that, that look like it's that looks up great? Enough? Okay. I could just start eating this. Don't, I have a big spoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once our filling is cooled, we fill our frozen pie crusts with the mixture. Then we glaze some pie crust with an egg wash and cut it into strips for the top crust. Just do two across, two over. Okay, there. You can also fold uh, under and over, but sure. this is the easy way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the easy way. You just dot a little bit more on top. Okay. Hand that to you. And then, um, that's the sea salt. So this is the sea salt. And we just do a little bit. We pop our mini pies in the oven to bake, and when time's up, we're ready to dig in. Salted caramel apple yeah. pies. It's gonna do it. I'm going for it. Mm. Hmm. Oh yeah. You would think that the caramel would make it super rich, but the apples are so perfect and tart that you could have this for breakfast. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. I'm saying. To get the recipe for pie, salted caramel apple pie, head to our website at wagrown.com. Nothing screams Americana like good old fashioned apple pie. Well, why is that? Well, we're gonna take these treats that we just made over at Pie, and we're gonna have people try them and see if they can tell us what makes apple pie so iconic. What is the connection between America and apple pie? I don't know, maybe apple farming? Something about wheat and I don't know. Uh, apple trees, George Washington. There you go. That's Good. all I got. Maybe it was more the cherry tree, but we'll go with that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> a lot of apples grow around here, I guess. <laughs> what I have here is a salted caramel apple pie okay. from Pie. Very cool. Give it a shot and tell me what you think. Very good. What do you think? America. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the way it's like mixed salty and sugary at the same time. Not overpowering, not too sweet. Some pies are too sweet, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, second bite to confirm. Yeah, let's do that. You haven't been in the States very long, have you? No. How long? One week. One week? So, okay, but you've had apple pie before, correct? Yes. Okay, now did you know that there's this kind of connection with America and apple pie? Have you heard of that before? No, you haven't. <laughs> All right, maybe it's not as Americana as we think. <laughs> so how often would you say you have apple pie? All holidays, you gotta have it every holiday. All holidays, so we're talking even New Year's, May Day, <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. If you know how to treat yourself. <laughs> every week? Every week, really? Probably not often enough. <laughs> yeah. Once a week? Yeah. Wow, and you look that good. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> the Americans love their apple pie, and I'm glad that we were able to share that with you. I'm well, happy too. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing finishes off apple pie quite like a delicious scoop of ice cream on top. We're off to Snoqualmie Ice Cream to see how their famous pints of the frozen treat are made. I met up with owner Barry Bettinger to get a tour of the factory. This is where the magic happens? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we buy milk and cream from Smith Brothers. So the milk is local. What other uh, ingredients do you use that are local? Well, our eggs come from Arlington. The berries are all local as well. Does that make a difference? Well, of course, Northwest berries are, are the best. And we're a local company. We support local. We like to get local support. First, the milk is pumped into a tank where sugar and cream are added. Then it's heated up, pasteurized, and homogenized. A homogenizer is like a uh, big emulsifier. So it just uh, shatters the fat globules and then uh, does some other things too, but uh, that way the fat won't go to the top, just stay, stays uniform throughout. Ah. Then the mix is frozen. All those yummy inclusions like cookie dough or chocolate chips are added in, and the ice cream is put into pints. Well, how much do you produce? We do about a million and a half pints per year. 
This year we'll probably hit closer to two million pints. Wow. What's the most popular flavor that you guys make? Well, it would be either our French lavender, Ooh. island coconut, or muckleteal mud. That's our chocolate. Muckleteal mud? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, what's your favorite? Mm, I think it varies by the week. Really like our Danish vanilla bean. Our vanilla bean is really, really good. Ooh, that sounds good. And do you, do you come up with new flavors too? Oh Are yeah, all the, all, the, all the time. Do you brainstorm for new ideas for flavors? Well, or? a lot of them are found from social media. Really? Like that crispy marshmallow treat. That was a contest winner on our Facebook page. Really? How fun. Mm -hmm. So usually I work on a flavor for at least a year, batch after batch, before I'm really happy with it. Yeah. And then I go through every year, every flavor we go down to try to make, try to make it better. Where, where can people where, find it? In just about every store in the Northwest. And then you said restaurants? Restaurants as well, too. yeah. Nice. And then we sell ice cream mix uh -huh. too. If people want a really high quality ice cream mix, they'll buy from us. I think we should taste some. What do you think? I'm ready, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> the espresso. Mmm, muckle teal mud. Look at that. That's really good. You want to try the salt and caramel? Twist my arm. So good. Is I'm that sorry. the buttermint? Yeah, I don't have my ID with me, but can I try the Tennessee whiskey? Mmm, really delicious. Mmm, brain freeze. The top three commodities in our state are apples, wheat, and dairy. So America can thank our state and its farmers for keeping the always classic apple pie in stock. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching. <laughs>